a story of addiction, recovery, and hope on this episode of Barnstable Today. I'm Sarah Colvin. It's Monday, January 9, 2012. This Thursday, Fall River native and former Boston Celtic Chris Heron will be coming to Barnstable High School. He won't be shooting hoops in the gym. Instead, he'll be telling our community his compelling story of his rise to basketball fame, all while battling a terrible addiction to drugs. Chris joined me on today's episode of Barnstable this morning to share just a portion of his story. So tell me, tell me Chris, a little bit about your story. Uh, go back, um, if you can, just briefly and, and tell our, our, our viewers a little bit about yourself. Well, I mean, I grew up in this area. I grew up in Florida, Massachusetts, and, uh, you know, always inspired uh, and dreamt of becoming a professional basketball player. And, and along the way, I was able to uh, to accomplish that. <clears throat> but there was a backstory, and that was, you know, that I was getting involved in bad choices and bad lifestyle decisions and, and social decisions that I that started for me at a young age, um, you know, in high school, that eventually caught up with me and, and uh, derailed that, that dream and that basketball career um, when I was 32. Exactly. And, uh, you know, reading your book, and I've seen the, the ESPN documentary Unguarded, which uh, many people say is, is very compelling. And it's just amazing to see, you know, you kind of rise from a, a, a high school star at Durfee and then go on to college basketball fame and professional basketball fame at the same time uh, with a wife and family and also uh, with, with this, this um, you know, substance abuse issue. And I know you, uh, you tried to stop several times, but of course, uh, you know, that's, that's easier said than done. Mm. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of people along the way, uh, you know, who there's fallout in addiction. You know, there's a lot of people who suffered uh, because of me and my because of my addiction, uh, like my wife, like my children, like my family and friends and et cetera. Um, you know, and, and there were times I tried to stop and there were times I told myself that I could uh, I could overcome this and I could, you know, I could manage it and I could juggle it and you know, it was just all lies and part of the uh, part of the disease. And you know, it wasn't until I I surrendered and and went away and and got opportunities like going to the Miller House and places like that, who uh, you know gave me time to to heal and to recover. Exactly, and I know you had tried, uh, you know, tried as you said, tried to stop on your own and gone through a couple of different rehab programs. What was it that finally, um, that finally did it for you? That allowed you to uh, to finally make it through and and battle with with the the problem. You know, I think I was just willing to put the work in, and you know, like I said, the, the places uh, like the Miller House, like Daytop, that I had gone to, um, gave me an opportunity to get my life back. And that's how I had to look at it. And, you know, it's not a place to just sit there and, and take a little break. It's a place uh, where you can, you know, heal and recover and, and put the work in. And, you know, I look back, and, and that's why it's important for me to go to Bonstable High School. Uh, you know, that's why it's important for me that I work for Gosnell, because that area, you know, the, the Cape itself and, and Gosnell is... is is one of the reasons why I'm at that today, for giving me the opportunity to get well. So talk to me, Chris, about why it's important for you now to share your story uh, with the public and especially with, uh, with youngsters here in, in New England. You know, just traveling around and, and, you know, starting this about two years ago, uh, seeing the uh, feedback that I was getting from, from students, whether it be in high school or college, uh, it was just an amazing feeling for me. Uh, you know, it gave kids an opportunity to to trust somebody and to uh, and gave them a voice. And the emails that I've received have been life changing. And for me, um, and at times for for the people who uh, who emailed me. So I don't know. It's just it's just important to me. It's it's something that is is within me. Uh, I don't want anybody to have to live the life that I did. Um, and if I can stop a young kid or, or, or anybody from, from going down that road, it, that's what it's all about. Exactly. And I know, Chris, that recovery is, is an everyday battle. It's not something that you can, you know, just wake up one morning and, and say, I'm cured. It is, as they say, you know, one day at a time. So I would think that, you know, doing stuff like this is, is very helpful to your recovery and it helps you stay, uh, stay clean. 
Yeah, 100%. I mean, they t- you know, you're told right, right from the get-go that you can't keep it unless you give it away. And uh, service work is, is extremely important. And, you know, traveling around, um, talking to kids and, and different groups is uh, is part of that. So it's um, it's better than any, uh, any trophy I've ever had, you know, in, in my basketball career because... You know, this is real life, and and uh, people people have been able to turn it around, whether it to, be due to a uh, basketball junkie or unguarded. Uh, you know, I, I recent, re- recently received a tweet from a guy who said, you know, I watched unguarded, and I'm 57 days sober. You know, um, that's amazing, you know. That's got to be a wonderful feeling, as you said, Chris, to, to know that you are definitely impacting people. And I think there's no question that, um, that you know, the, the message that you send is getting to people. What makes, what makes you different? I know that, of course, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of people who will go around and talk to kids and say, you know, don't do drugs, it's, it's bad. And I think that, that there's, a, there's kind of a, a unique impact that your message has. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, when you're, when you're formulating these talks, when you, when you get ready to, to speak to an audience, of course, uh, you know, you're hoping that your message gets across. Is there Anything specific that you do, anything that you think of in mind when you get up in front of these kids to share your your important message? Well, I think you know, as as unguarded uh, as that was presented, I, I kind of changed my my talk due to the the, the audience as well. Um, you know, if it's younger kids, it's a different talk. If it's city kids, if it's if it's college kids. Um, you know, or, or people in the treatment center, the talk is a little different every time. I get nervous like, I, like I'm like i doing it for my first time because I know the importance of it, and it means so much to me to get out there and do it. Um, but, you know, I think playing for the Celtics, uh, playing for the Nuggets, playing professional basketball, being, um, you know, a Fall River kid has given me a little bit of credibility. <laughs> so when you walk in the gym... You know, it's just not some doctor uh, coming in to talk. It's it's a guy who played professional sports, and the kids the kids tend to listen a little bit. I think that anybody, when they speak from the heart with with honesty, I think that people can relate to that. You know, and that's what I try to do. I just try to speak to whatever group um, that I'm talking to from the heart and and tell them tell them my story and and spill my guts because you know some people say like, wow, you know, it must be really hard to tell that story or you know, um, sometimes do you not want to talk about those things? And I say absolutely, but, you know, it's it's important because someone else might be going through the same thing or it might scare somebody from from uh, from going down that road. So, Chris, uh, when people come to Barnesville High School this Thursday, uh, what are you hoping they walk away with? What are you hoping they take away from uh, from after seeing your presentation? You know, I I just, it's it's all about raising awareness. You know, it's all about opening um, lines of communication. You know, I think that's that's another amazing email that I've received, a pretty common email along the way, is that, you know, I, if you've given me the opportunity to sit down and talk with my child or with my mother my father. And, um, you know, if, if if I can do that and inspire somebody to to go home and say, hey, you know, I've been going down this road and I need help, or, you know, maybe I should call, um, maybe I should call Gosnold and, and go to detox. I mean, that's all I hope for. You know, if I can reach one kid in that audience or one parent or, or whoever, um, it's, that's, that's worth it 100%. Exactly, and I, you know, we'd hope that people don't start down that road, but I think also to take away that, you know, if you are in trouble, that there is help, and you can, uh, you can essentially turn your life around and get better again. Absolutely. I mean, I, there was a point in my life where I didn't think that I could turn it around. There was a point in my life where I had no, I didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel, and there is, and there's a way, and you know, one day at a time, that way can, you know, that light can shine and. And, uh, you know, I thank God every day um, for the people who helped me along the way and the people who weren't afraid to confront me and say, hey, you know, it's time to go. And uh, it's amazing. Chris Heron will be appearing at Barnesville High School this Thursday evening at 6.30 p.m. The talk is sponsored by Gosnell Treatment Centers, the Hyannis Youth and Community Center, and Barnesville Libraries. The event is free of charge.
With Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Colvin.